Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of condolences from His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on the demise of His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Premier prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the soul of the deceased in eternal peace, grant the royal family solace and fortitude, and protect His Majesty the King. His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness the Premier, in which he prayed to to Allah the Almighty to rest the soul of the deceased in eternal peace, grant all solace and fortitude, and bless His Royal Highness the Premier with abundant health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Majesty the King underlined Bahrain's support to all the precautionary measures taken by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to prevent the arrival and spread of the coronavirus in order to protect its citizens, residents, and visitors coming to perform Umrah and visit the kingdom. The Saudi King expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for Bahrain's support of all forms of precautionary measures taken by the two kingdoms to prevent this dangerous virus. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the U.S. Naval Support Activity in the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness was welcomed by the Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, Vice Admiral James Malloy. He highlighted the efforts of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF, alongside partners and allies in safeguarding regional security and stability and noted the unwavering support provided to the BDF by His Majesty the King, which has had a profound impact on its combat capabilities. The Crown Prince noted the U.S. Fifth Fleet's role in supporting regional safety and stability and underscored the importance of further bolstering strategic partnerships with allies to ensure that regional maritime security and trade is preserved. His Royal Highness was briefed on the Fifth Fleet's main responsibilities and tasks within the region and was also updated on the far-reaching maritime partnerships established with the Kingdom. His Highness Major Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, accompanied His Royal Highness the Crown Prince during the visit. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawziya Zainal, chaired the weekly meeting where the report of the Committee for Foreign Affairs and National Defense was discussed. A number of the laws were approved on the revocation of the Bahraini citizenship in the event of the commitment of terrorist acts. Then the Council voted against questioning the Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan. The Council also discussed a report by the Public Facilities and Environment Committee on extraction and selling of sea sand. Finally, the Council will discuss another report on fishing and protection of marine life. The Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received in Cairo the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al-Zayani, who delivered to the President a written letter from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on bolstering relations between the two countries. The Foreign Affairs Minister conveyed to the Egyptian President the greetings of His Majesty the King and his wishes of abundant health and happiness, as well as further progress and prosperity for Egypt. The Egyptian President asked the Foreign Affairs Minister to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and 
his wishes of further development and progress for the kingdom. He hailed the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and the development they witness in various fields. The Egyptian President congratulated Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani on his appointment as Foreign Affairs Minister, wishing him success. For his part, Dr. Zayani expressed the kingdom's pride in the broadly historic relations, affirming their keenness on bolstering cooperation for the interests of the two countries and their people. He commended Egypt's strategic role in maintaining regional and international security, peace and stability, and in supporting Arab causes in various world events. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdel Latif Zayani, met with the Foreign Minister of Egypt, Salmah Shukri, in Cairo today. During the meeting, Zayani affirmed the deep rooted bilateral ties under the leadership of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, and expressed happiness about their ongoing development on all fields. Zayani praised the efforts of Egypt in protecting the national security of the Arab world and for its service of Arab and Muslim affairs, as well as its counter terrorism efforts, which promote safety and stability for all. He also praised Egypt's development on all levels and wished it further progress and prosperity. For his part, Sama Shukri expressed pride in meeting Azayani and congratulated him for enjoying His Majesty the King's confidence in him. He praised the bilateral ties and expressed hope that they will be further developed on all fields in the service of both countries and people. Following the directives of His Royal Highness Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to distribute 5,000 units in light of the royal directives, the Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar, announced the distribution of the first stage of a Ramli units. The minister added that this project is within the new projects of Bahrain, including Salman and Khalifa Town and East Head projects, which is all under the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to build. 40,000 housing units. He praised the partnership between the government and private sectors, which contributes to provide the housing needs for the people. The minister said that the project is 100% completed and now the ministry is working on the East Sitra project in cooperation with the Chinese company CMEC. He added that all of these efforts aim to meet the housing aspirations of the people of Bahrain. The Ministry of Health held a press conference earlier headed by the Minister of Health Faiqa bin Saeed al Saleh and the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 at the Crown Prince Centre for Training and Medical Research. During the press conference, the Minister highlighted the tremendous efforts taken by the Ministry of Health in cooperation with various public bodies such as the Ministry of Interior, the Bahrain Defence Force, the Ministry of Information Affairs, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments and the Ministry of Transportation and telecommunications to deal with the issue. The minister added that all cases are stable at the moment, adding that she conducted visits to the concerned medical centers to check the capabilities of the medical caters responsible. She praised the visit of the WHO regional director to the kingdom, where he hailed the kingdom's preventive measures and efforts to combat the coronavirus. She expressed thanks and appreciation to all government bodies who are working to combat this virus, as well as the role of the GCC countries and their collective efforts in this regard, in addition to the role of the medical team of the Kingdom for their tireless efforts in combating the COVID-19. The Minister also hailed the role of the press and media in raising awareness regarding the issue. She expressed hope that this conference will benefit everyone to overcome this pandemic issue. Dr. Jamila Salman affirmed that 47 cases do not need treatment and are not showing any symptoms and will soon be released. She added that so far only two cases are under treatment for the time being. She affirmed that in the coming days more cases will be released for being completely healthy. Infectious Diseases Consultant and some Microbiologist at the PDF Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus COVID-19, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Menaf al Ghattani noted that the Kingdom's preventive measures which began before the identification of the first domestic case are ensuring the continued safety and well-being of citizens and residents alike. To ensure the risk of infection remains low, he confirmed that Bahrain will continue its epidemiological monitoring at entry points, particularly at Bahrain's 
International Airport enacting strict screening procedures for all incoming passengers with particular attention placed on those returning from Iran or other countries with high infection rates. He then highlighted the ongoing efforts of the national medical team to prevent coronavirus COVID-19 headed by Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, which ensures that all preventive measures are in line with the World Health Organization recommendations. Dr. Manaf added that the preventive measures include establishing an operations room to closely monitor COVID-19 developments, introducing a comprehensive communication manual, increasing public awareness through outreach programs, upskilling healthcare workers to better manage crisis, introducing a COVID-19 hotline available triple four, and launching an electronic registration service to schedule medical examinations for returnees from Iran. Dr. Manaf concluded by highlighting the progress made by the mobile testing process, instructing all who have tested negative to follow health guidelines and self-isolate for 14 days, for which they will receive paid medical leave. The Ministry of Health has announced that the recently introduced mobile testing process has completed collecting samples from 1,200 individuals who returned from Iran before the country announced the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic in February. The samples collected are from individuals who have scheduled medical examination dates either electronically or by calling 444. The ministry's dedicated laboratories have completed testing 600 of the 1,200 samples collected thus far, all of which tested negative for COVID-19 and is working on testing the remaining samples. The Ministry of Health's mobile testing process is also currently working to visit the remaining registered returnees to collect samples. The Ministry of Health is continuously intensifying all precautionary and preventive measures to contain the spread of COVID-19, calling on all individuals who returned from Iran during February to schedule medical examination dates by visiting www.moh.gov.bh dash triple four or calling triple four the ministry instructed all who have tested negative to follow health guidelines and self-isolate for 14 days for which they will receive paid medical leave and to actively communicate with the specialized medical team The Ministry of Health announced that 12 individuals have been given the green light to leave quarantine after completing a preventive mandatory 14-day stay, having tested negative for the coronavirus COVID-19. The Ministry stated that the 12 individuals include 10 Bahraini nationals returning from Iran and one Bahraini and one Chinese national both returning from China. The Ministry further highlighted that the individuals had been monitored closely by a highly specialized medical team for the duration of their quarantine. The ministry affirmed that the measures taken within all quarantine centers are in line with established guidelines set out by the World Health Organization, aimed at combating the spread of the virus and safeguarding the health of citizens and residents. Individuals are reminded to avoid interacting with others in order to avoid the spread of the virus to their families and to the community. The ministry noted that all citizens and residents who have tested negative for COVID-19 have been provided with the health and awareness guidelines and instructions to isolate themselves at their homes for 14 days for which they will receive paid medical leave. The Ministry of Health affirmed that it continues to take precautionary measures to combat the spread of coronavirus. The Ministry called on all sections of Bahraini society to follow the instructions they have been provided to ensure their safety and to avoid spreading the virus. The Ministry affirmed that it has called up on all of its caters in coordination with other parties and the Kingdom to combat the virus. The ministry also affirmed the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding close contacts. It also stressed the importance of covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and advised to avoid public spaces when possible. The ministry called on citizens and residents to strengthen their immune system by exercising, eating well and drinking plenty of water while ensuring that all scheduled vaccines are taken as per the ministry's recommendations. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Health has detected the first coronavirus case of Saudi national traveling from Iran to the kingdom through Bahrain. The ministry said the Saudi national did not disclose to the authorities at the Saudi entry point that he had been in Iran recently. Once he tested positive for the virus, he was placed under quarantine and is being provided the necessary medical care. The ministry assured the public that the authorities are currently testing everyone who came into contact with the infected Saudi national. 
Coronavirus continues to spread across Middle East and North Africa with over 1,100 infected across the region. The virus first started spreading from Wuhan, China earlier this year and has since infected nearly 90,000 people with over 3,000 dead. The Middle East has been hit particularly hard as cases started spreading across the region as travelers returned from Iran, the second deadliest epicenter for the disease after China, with 66 reported dead. While no cases have yet been declared in Syria, officials have begun to prepare for the virus spreading to the country. Oman's foreign ministry said the Sultanate has implemented a travel ban on all visitors from countries where the coronavirus has spread. The concerned authorities stated that due to the rise rate of coronavirus infection in some countries, visitors to Oman from countries where the coronavirus has spread will be banned from entering through all air, sea and land entry ports as a precautionary measure. There has been six reported cases of the virus in Oman, all of which involved travelers who came from Iran. Meanwhile, Jordan has recorded its first coronavirus case in a person who recently traveled to Italy, according to the health minister. Health Minister Saad Jabr said two people showing coronavirus symptoms came forward on Sunday for testing, but only one tested positive. The other person was placed in quarantine as a precautionary measure. Three family members of the infected person are also being tested. He said if no additional infections are confirmed, those who were in contact with the patient will remain in quarantine for 14 days. Morocco's health ministry declared its first coronavirus case from a Moroccan man living in Italy. The ministry said the man is currently receiving health care at the hospital in Casablanca and his health condition is not critical. In neighboring Algeria, authorities reported two new coronavirus cases yesterday, which brings the total of confirmed cases to five. Also, Tunisia has confirmed its first case of the new coronavirus. Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Why? Washing your hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand rub kills viruses that may be on your hands. Maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing and avoid crowded areas as much as possible. Why? When someone coughs or sneezes, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which may contain viruses. If you are too close, you can breathe in the droplets, including the COVID-19 virus, if the person coughing has the disease. Crowds are unpredictable zones. Avoid them for now. Why? Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose or mouth. From there, the virus can enter your body and make you sick. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Why? Droplets spread viruses. By following good respiratory hygiene, you protect the people around you from viruses such as colds, flus, and COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention by calling 444 
and follow the instructions given by the medical team. Why? The Ministry of Health has the most up-to-date information on the situation, which will protect you and help prevent the spread of viruses and other infections.